Okay, look, before anyone says anything, I know this book was high key trying to convert me to the Zen Buddhism teachings while trying to keep it low key. And I know it was filled with sappy things. And odds are, if you didn't like the Midnight Library for certain reasons, you probably won't like this book. But look, if the Zen teachings here were a car, and I think they would make a very nice sort of car, a very nice non-material sort of car, because I mean, I enjoyed a ton of things about this book, like the writing for example, so I do think it would be a nice car. And if it hit me with its kind of concept of anti-consumer culture and everything, I wouldn't mind, because it's not a bad concept and it's also not like 500 kilograms, so I would be totally fine with it. The reason I would be fine is because it's not really supporting hate or anything and it's also not saying you'll burn in hell if you don't do this, it's not forcing you to believe in God and the Buddhist teachings, it's just kind of promoting a way of living that's compassionate and friendly. That's an agenda that they're shoving down, just a warning that this is very clearly a book in support of living like this. When people talk about books that make a case against consumerism, typically people get defensive because we, like, look at my room, I have stuff everywhere, and it's typically stuff that doesn't necessarily promote joy. Uh, some of it is stuff I need, some of it I agree is garbage, and I am definitely more motivated to clean it out now. I liked a lot of things about this book, and if by the end of this review you like those kind of things and you decide to give the book a try, I don't think you will be hurt by it trying to convert you to living a cleaner life, right? I mean, even if it is attempting to radicalize you as some people who don't want to change and want to stick with their method of living might say, that is fine because you don't have to follow it. It's just a book. It won't change your entire life, right? Or will it? If you've been following this channel for a while now, you know I've been on a bit of a streak for reading books that talk about the experience of reading. Very self-indulging, I know, a bit tacky perhaps, to like reading so you read about reading. Very meta, very suitable perhaps, but this is what I mean. The book takes a kind of position that books can indeed change your life because it makes books this omniscient presence that fully recognizes humans and know things that you don't and like sees the future they express their sentiments and they even talk about how for example they're jealous about some things like feeling actual physical contact humans when they first like fall in love and those kinds of feelings and they really make you think think about things that you didn't think before because it, it takes the approach of a book there was a passage about books saying that they felt really rejected when you take a book and you're not done with it and you pile another book on top and i have done that so many times sometimes because i'm running out of space physically on the shelf and it just made me think about this whole thing entirely in a different way and this is one of those books that really does flip your perspective. The book tells us that before us we have a story of Benny O, a 14 year old boy, and he's dealing with grief after his father's death and we have the I wish it were the other parent trope which always makes me feel terrible because it's just extremely heartbreaking and he recognizes that his life is not the same anymore and his mother turns to hoarding. Hoarding is when you keep stuff and you have an inability to throw it out. Their house gets overrun by stuff. If you've ever seen those shows when they come and clean out, things possessing you as the author says because the entire house, every space is filled with objects that you can't bear to part with. And if that's not enough, we have just the pinch of magical realism that Benny starts to hear voices from the objects around him. And so the story is just following Benny's growing up and not so much in a physical way because he's still 14, he's still a young boy, but in a more spiritual and in a more existential way he thinks about how he had his first love and about how he how he treats his mother and their changing relationship and about how he's going to deal with the world and about puberty and about just change as you transition from teenagehood to adulthood and it's one of these books that leaves you questioning the nature of reality and indeed one of the questions put forward by the characters is what is real and it really is extraordinarily easy to lose your grip on your own world so on our world that we have we know with our mind that Benny has problems right like how can this 
I don't know, this cup of water that's kind of empty, uh, be talking to us. So we recognize that it's, this is not how we do it in our conformist society, but we also really emphasize with it because the way that this uh, entire experience is described makes it feel real. And I have to say the passage about scissors is exactly how I imagine scissors to talk. So there's just that factor of relatability and this unreliable narrator trope that leaves you really confused. And it just makes it very easy to escape to the world of Benny and to believe in what goes on around him as real and as absolutely normal and the writing is beautiful and I think it absolutely helps it with phrases such as if skin marks the border where um, where an eye ends and the you begins then that night they did all they could to cross it the whole plot with its riveting new developments and vivid engaging plot whirls you away instantly and it just felt extremely novel and novel also because of all I literally read nothing to do with Buddhism before this and this really covers the in lack of development of certain characters quite well. This whole, am I here? Am I there? It's all just a blur. Uh, because I felt like Ayla, for example, was more of an idea. And for sure, a relevant one with the current discourse surrounding like socio-political art and creating. Characters came into being at random and the story just kind of washed over you this whole great sea of interconnectivity with things happening here things happening there and this was connected but everything just went around you and kind of over your head and took you with it and i guess it's very suitable to what's being talked about here it felt like we knew them we just can't place it out loud what exactly it is like for example with Benny of course you know him very intimately by the end of the book but at the same time it feels like you don't know a fundamental part of him yet it also feels okay like almost like you're on two different journeys the book also talks about how sanity is really relative in other cultures so for example in America Benny is diagnosed as schizophrenic because I mean he hears voices of course hallucinations drugs medicine <laughs> just everything just is thrown at him in a way but in Japan when uh, Annabelle his mother talks about their situation to the author that she likes the author of a cleaning book that she tries to use to help her problems they view it as normal because people believe that it's like the spirits of the objects so for them what Benny is doing is visionary in the book of form and emptiness Ruth Sozeki for sure takes you on a journey with her and maybe it's a journey you'll enjoy in which case I think you will be very glad you read the book and easy five stars, talk about it to all your friends or maybe it won't be for you and I think that's fine too because the book just has a very accepting vibe towards it all. I mean of course with the teachings and everything, very easy to just pick up the book and if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you get um, a bit irritated with open-endedness and a lack of a concise and firm closing point, then maybe this book is not for you and especially with all the frustration that's built on the journey with all the trauma and the heartbreak and I'm not sure that I'm happy with how it was all resolved. One thing I would say in terms of criticism as if I wasn't talking for like the past 10 minutes, if this book were a marathon it would make it to the finish line but barely because the pacing could have been improved it just required so much patience on the part of the reader it felt so incredibly annoying and unsettling to just let stuff happen I guess because we aren't used to it in books we always like recognize that oh come on something needs to happen especially if it's like a thriller but the book really went its own way and you couldn't control it at all like things that you thought would happen happened but not when you thought they would would happen it was definitely practice to build up your patience and I can't explain why I feel like I'm suddenly more patient there's a sort of tranquility I feel and Ozeki's new work is not a favorite it's far from five stars for me but it's a solid number around four stars if you really want to quantify it simply because it really did uh, did manage to cover a lot of things and I thought cover it well in an organic way and not like a bingo tick off so for example a discussion on on existence of course and just the current climate situation and then the music and the short stories and then parting with what you knew and what you're used to it felt very natural in the story because the characters were just living their own lives and oh this is what our life is like so it just came up and it's for sure a great book club pick i was quite conflicted uh, on the references for example zizek okay 
I was so happy after I wanted to make sure that I wasn't being completely insane and seeing like a homage to Zizek. So I whipped out Google, I checked everything and the author said that it was a homage to him. Oh, I was very happy <laughs> because I recognized it. So it wasn't like I was just pulling stuff out of nowhere. But also it just felt a bit weird to have him placed as this just mentor like someone we all know to a boy like it was fun and all and i think he would like it but it just also felt strange especially seeing him placed in this sort of figure of a homeless genius collecting bottles <laughs> and the marie kondo references were also quite on point i feel like this managed to be quite modern and at the same time old-fashioned so yeah hypertextuality and all that thank you so much for watching this video that's all i want to say without going on a two hour long tangents that is spoiler filled because I want to review all the books on the women's prize this year like long list and short list and I also want to keep the reviews spoiler free specifically because I want people to be able to discover these books and maybe find a new favorite or maybe if they <laughs> trust my opinion then to just like stay away from a particular book if you want to discuss this book I would love that so please reach out and let's talk about it thank you so much for watching and see you on Sunday with another GCSE study guide Bye.